Okay, everybody, here's the final installment, our third and final uh, video for this lecture. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to build the recommendation engine or a recommender engine. One of the things you're going to see is that I use that standard analytics process, uh, methodology process. Uh, you're going to see that I do it in Excel. That's based on the Wayne Winston book and the chapter he has on collaborative filtering, is if you're looking it up. Um, and we're going to download the spreadsheet from my GitHub website. So when I talk about the analytics process, what you see over here is the analytics process, the steps that were in that crisp DM. And what I'm going to do is walk through each of those steps as if you were an analytics team member actually trying to do that piece of the process. So the first thing we always start out with is tell us, like, what is the business problem we're trying to solve? And I've got a picture there, Bezos, and uh, he's going to lay out the problem for you. You're going to get it from the CEO yourself. He's saying that I'm, we're thinking about building a recommendation engine to replace Yelp for restaurants. Can you build me a couple examples of recommendation engines for restaurants around UF? So that's the first piece is this business problem that's very clearly stated. And sometimes you don't always get statements that are that clear. But in this case, since I wrote it, it's clear. The success definition is a second important part of this business understanding. It's like, OK, so I know the problem, but how do I know what good looks like? So that would be success definition. So he's saying that I would define success if you could predict how much someone would like a restaurant based on how much others who are like that person of interest like that restaurant. That way we could make a rest we could make restaurant recommendations to the person of interest. So I didn't like totally come up with that on my own. Amazon's trying to get into everything and they have really good recommendation engines. And you know I got a couple of things here. First of all, there was a thing called Amazon restaurants. <laughs> it didn't work. Like here's a quick uh, hyperlink. If I'm teaching my class, I have these hyperlinks in my uh, presentation so that, you know, we can talk about real. And here's kind of real from the Prime Insider about Amazon restaurants. And it no longer exists. If you go click on other places, it will tell you that this thing is now shut down. But this is really interesting about Amazon restaurants where we originally something like um, Grubhub, where it would deliver to you as opposed to what I proposed in, in our presentation, which is that they just make a recommendation. But having said that, there is a really cool video about how Amazon's recommendation engines work that I want to show and that I would show in my class that I taught in marketing analytics. So let's watch that for just a second. It's just a few minutes. <music>
So um, I like kind of showing this stuff um, in my class, like I said. And normally I pick videos that are like two or three minutes long. I don't normally pick longer than that because the attention span kind of drifts if it's longer than that. But it's really interesting that when you show a video about something on YouTube and you're teaching, like how much the students seem to think it's real compared to just you lecturing. So if you do go into academia out of this uh, program, just something to remember. They never uh, like to watch these long videos like the ones you're watching right now. So keep it short. It's one of my uh, lessons learned in life. So here's what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, go download the spreadsheet from GitHub. And you should be able to click that directly from the PowerPoint if you downloaded the PowerPoint. It's going to take you to this site. GitHub is a site where uh, you can load up code, like if you write code and you share code between developers. You can also share data with other people on there so that if they're building models, they can have the same data set. And then lastly, you can actually put files up there like this is a file that I can just download and it downloaded it. Now I can open it directly into Excel. So what we're going to do from here on out is we're going to go back and forth between the PowerPoint presentation and we're going to use this spreadsheet. So um, this uh, is what I call a toy data set. It's really small and I'm going to explain it in a second. There's three tabs currently on there. Um, I was going to load one that had kind of a, a second uh, tab on it, the, but we'll just use this raw data tab. It'll, it'll work fine. Make sure that you enable the editing piece. And then I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet or to the PowerPoint so we can talk about it for a minute. So what this data is, is I made up a, um, restaurant preferences for restaurants that are within a quarter mile of where you're sitting right now. And these are all kind of real restaurants within a quarter mile of the business school. And then I took the, so these are the restaurants. And then here I took the group members names. Um, and for, these are all members of the marketing department, sort of, I made them up. So these aren't their real ratings. These are just ones that I kind of, uh, change the name to protect the innocent. So Jim vacuum, that would be Jim Hoover. So uh, if you're looking for my uh, coding mechanism. So the, then I gave each restaurant based on that person, what I thought that person would give on a scale of one to five with, with one being really not preferred and five being preferred. And don't go back to them and tell them that this is what I said, that whether they like the restaurant or not, or don't go to the restaurant and say, hey, you know, Jim Hoover thinks that your restaurant is not any good. That's not true. This is just purely for illustrative purposes. What you see now is that we're gaining an understanding of the data that's in this spreadsheet. And if I were to go to the spreadsheet itself, it's the same thing that you just saw. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so that it's easier to see. So this spreadsheet is equal to this. I just took a screenshot of that portion of the spreadsheet. It's a toy data set. So what that means is I'm not going through and cleansing data. I'm not going through and adding new variables or anything else. A uh, toy data set is not one that's real. That's why it's a toy. So um, you don't need to know that other than I'm just doing this to illustrate how a recommender engine works. If you had a real recommender engine, a recommendation engine for ex for Amazon or for Spotify, you're talking thousands of choices for to make. And then you're talking in terms of members, you're talking millions of members. So just think about how big a matrix that is. And you couldn't really do that in Excel. You would have to use some other kind of tool uh, to do that. And they also use some shortcuts that we won't talk about here in class. But for our purposes, this is going to illustrate really well how it works. So the modeling approach is that we're going to try and pick my rating, Jim Vacuum's rating for a restaurant that I haven't been to, which is Rising Roll, which is over in Havener. Um, to begin with, we're going to calculate 
the mean or my average rating for all the restaurants that I've rated. And then we'll try to identify the people whose ratings are most like my ratings for the same restaurants. Then we'll adjust the ratings for of each person who's rated Rising Roll to adjust Jim Hoover's average rating for that restaurant. The more similar the other people's ratings are to Jim ba Jim's ratings, then the more weight we will give their their ratings. And there are several ways that you can evaluate like how similar how similar things are. Um, one way that people use pretty frequently is correlation. Another way is um, using geometry. We're not going to do that, um, but in essence, we're going to use this correlation coefficient to figure out how closely related two people are. And you guys all should be familiar with correlation coefficients. So this is not like super complex machine learning. This is a really simple model. But if the correlation between uh, Jim Vacuum and another person is close to plus one, then if the other person likes a restaurant, then Jim Vacuum's going to like that restaurant is more likely to like that restaurant. If the correlation between a person and Jim Vacuum is close to negative one, then if the other person likes a restaurant, then Jim Vacuum is less likely to like that restaurant. That should all make sense to you. In Excel, we're going to use this C-O-R-R-E-L, or correlation function, to determine the correlation between two data sets. Um, Ignore this part about the build tab. I just uh, we'll, we'll we'll do that right now. We'll just take this raw data tab and we're going to move our copy, create a copy and we'll move it here and we'll call it the build tab. And that way I've preserved my raw data without kind of messing with it. And now I've got a tab, uh, data set that I can mess around with without messing with the original data. That's just kind of good hygiene for people who are in the analytics world. So we'll go back to here, and first we're going to calculate the correlation between all of the restaurant raters, and we're going to uh, calculate the mean of each rater in column J. And then uh, and if you were to take and print these out, you can do these step by step. I'm actually going to do them myself uh, so that we can illustrate how to do all this work. So. Um, I can't show you that at the same time as I'm actually doing it in the spreadsheet. So when you get ready to do this yourself or hand it to somebody to do, you can just give them this and the step-by-step the -step approach is here included in the um, PowerPoint. So the first thing I say is let's in cell J7 right here type in the title mean and then um, in cell J8 type in equal average, and then we're going to just take the average or the mean of here to here, and then we're going to close that, and that creates calculates the mean for each rater. Like for Alan Cook's, his mean restaurant rating is 3.5. And then I will drag it down by using that little handle thing, drag it down that same calculation, and you can see that calculation is the same it's just on the different line. Oops. Now, some people would ask, like, what is this line, Jim? That is just something that we're going to call the index line. So in row 15, we're going to create an index. Uh, index just means this is the first observation, second observation, third observation, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That kind of just indicates what is the restaurant number, as opposed to saying Chipotle, it's restaurant number one. Then in cell C16 and C17, we're going to enter the name of the two raters that we're going to do. So um, I don't know if you've ever used the validation uh, capability that's within Excel before. This is a really powerful thing that keeps you from making mistakes in Excel. So up here under conditional uh, formatting, um, let's see. Oh, it's under data. Um, data validation. Under data, data validation, we're going to do this thing called data validation right here. And we are going to, that pops up this box 
we're then going to click on uh, any value. I'm going to change that to list. And then we're going to say the source of the list is this. And what that does when we click OK now is we get this drop down box. And you can only pick among the members that are up there. And that makes sure that you don't make a mistake like put a, an E at the end of cook or something so that it wouldn't actually uh, look stuff up. Um, so here we're going to compare, for instance, in this first version, we're going to compare Rich Luster. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do this data validation, uh, data validation list. And then we're going to source the same ones. We're going to, what we're doing is we're setting this up so we can compare two different people. So we're going to compare Rich Luster with Jim Vacuum here. So now we've got these two and we selected them so we know it's absolutely right. Uh, this is going to be useful a little bit later. Um, so if you go to the next one, the next page in your PowerPoint, what we're going to do is use rows 16 and 17 uh, to calculate the correlation between Rich Luster and Jim Vacuum. So in cell D16, we're going to enter this formula. Uh, and it's a long formula. What I recommend is you take this uh, page, and I'm going to hit Escape and just put it so I can um, use that page directly. And this will make your life a lot easier. We're just going to copy and paste some stuff. So this is that uh, page. And we're just going to copy this formula directly from my notes. Hit Control C, and then we're going to go over to Excel, and we're going to put our cursor up here in the formula bar and hit that and hit Enter. And what you see now, what this formula does, it's, it's an index. It says, look up in this group here for the name Rich Luster, and then do a match. Um, for this index number, that's why we needed the index, do a match uh, and put the number that Rich uh, gave to that Chipotle and put it in that cell. And once we do that, it says two here and it says two here. So we know the lookup, this index, did that correctly. We're going to copy that formula using that. We're going to drag it over here. And then that basically you can check it. it. It exactly copied the numbers that were up there. This will all be apparent in a minute while we're doing this, because what we really need to do is do the comparisons across all of these raters, across all of these individual uh, restaurants to come up with the similarity score that we need. So then we're going to do the same thing in um, Copy this formula and copy it down here. Let's check it. Jim Vacuum gave Chipotle a four. It's a four down here. Now we're going to hit Escape, and then we're going to drag this across. And now what you see is Jim Vacuum, he's got uh, a zero in that uh, because there isn't a rating for a rising roll right here. So what you see is this um, zero. We need to take care of that because we don't really want to run a comparison on the one that's a zero because that actually isn't a zero. We actually can only have between one and five like we talked about before. So um, what we're going to do here. In cell C18, we're going to actually kind of copy what we did right here to get rid of this lookup of the zero. So in cell C18, um, 
we're going to enter equal rich luster and then in cell C19 we're going to enter gym vacuum and then um, in cell D18 right here we're going to enter an if then statement if I go back to my PowerPoint we're going to copy this statement right here and what this does we'll, we'll look at it in just a second uh, we're going to paste it up here control V and hit enter and now let's look what that does it basically says count if um, this value is greater than zero equal to two um, if, if both of those are equal to two then give it the original value d16 and if not give it this underscore that's what that formula does so it makes no difference if when I drag it all the way across because there were no zeros on rich lusters but there was a zero on Jim vacuum so we're gonna do the same formula um, we're gonna copy that formula down one and now when we go across what you're gonna see is it's the exact same numbers as this row except for when it got to the zero it gave it a underscore and basically we're gonna need that because what we're gonna do right now is enter the correlation so if you go here we're going to enter this formula which is the correlation of the two raters without the one that had a missing value so we're going to copy and then we're going to go back to excel and we're going to paste now what this does is it calculates the correlation between row 18 and row 19 but it excludes the value when uh, there was a missing value and rising roll for Jim. Hopefully that all makes sense to you and if you were in class I would ask you if that made sense to you but you just have to roll with it for right now but essentially the question that I would have for you is how similar are these two raters? So we've got one two three four five six different restaurants we're not counting this one because there isn't a comparison to be made so how similar are those if the correlation is 0.51 that means they're pretty similar that's a positive number meaning they're positive positively related and um, let's take a look at this you guys know how to do this right I mean what you do is you take these two and then you insert a scatter plot and that is the relationship between the two different raters and um, if you wanted to you can actually do the trend line add trend line to do a little regression there and you could show the regression linear regression on the chart along with the R squared so what you can see is an upward sloping line indicating that the two raters were similar you can also see this R squared where did the R squared come from we're going to change the title to uh, correlation scatter plot okay so you won't get any credit on your TBA dissertation for this but I'm just trying to show you some things that uh, we would do to indicate that there is a correlation right so and the relationship R squared is nothing more than the R squared okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a data table that's going to be the correlation between each of these individual people and the second person we're going to use all this stuff that we just built to do that so um, the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to in cell C here let's go back in cell C22 we're going to enter this formula here we're going to copy control C and then we're going to paste in C22 the formula 
and basically it's taken that correlation if you double click it you can see the correlation between those two rows including this fact that it's going to um, set it to an underlying thing uh, there and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy the names up here and then we'll do a paste special to paste them with a transpose here, which basically takes this vertical thing and makes it this vertical thing and makes it horizontal like that. Uh, and then we're going to use a feature that you've perhaps not seen before. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. You've got the table. It looks like this. We're going to use a feature called under the what if analysis uh, that basically does a data table and it basically makes a correlation matrix the way you've seen it before. And if you want to, there's a video here on how to do data tables and a, and a hyperlink reference on how to do data tables. Or you can just follow along and see how we're going to do it here. So essentially, uh, we're going to select that whole table down here. And then we're going to do pointers up here to these two, person one and person two. So we'll go back over here. We'll call this person one. Um, this person two. Those are the comparisons that are going to happen. And we're going to select this whole matrix, and then we're going to go data. We're going to go what if analysis data table. For the input row, we're going to say change person one for the rows and change person two for the columns. And then what's going to happen when we click OK is it's going to fill out this table and it's going to show you the correlation matrix between those two people. Shazam! So what that did was Alan Cooks is absolutely 100% correlated with Alan Cooks. This looks like a lot of the correlation matrices that you've seen before. And you can see like who's most correlated with Alan Cooks? Looks to me like uh, Steve tough here is the right one. He's highly correlated with Alan. Like in the second one is Rich Luster. Who's Rich correlated with? He's very correlated with Steve Tuff. How about a New Year Celebrate? He's very correlated with Shan French. And then Yan Tree, Yang Tree is not really correlated very well with anybody. Matter of fact, negatively correlated with Rich Luster. So what you see here is a, a, an entire correlation matrix. We're now ready to set up the uh, recommend, recommender engine. So to set up the recommender engine in cell C31, we want to enter the title predict rating. Four. In cell D31, we want to enter the title person. And then we're going to use the data validation approach for this, the same as we did before. So um, we're going to predict the rating for rising role for um, gym vacuum. And what we're going to do here is we're going to predict the, or do a list the same as we did before. Data validation, data validation. Um, we're going to choose list and our source is going to be here, the restaurant names. And click OK. Now we got a drop down box. We're going to click rising roll. Then we're going to do a data validation for the person. And so we're going to um, do the same thing we did just a second ago, data validation, data validation. And we're going to change it to list. And then we're going to use this list. Now we've got a drop down. We can Jim Vacuum is the person. I probably want to pick the same color. So I'm going to format that one like that. And then for the person, I'm going to pick the same kind of color. 
like that. We'll make things a little better. And then um, now we've got data. Now we can pick any restaurant and we just by clicking here and choosing the drop down and we can pick any person. Now we're going to use another tool that we haven't used before. And we're going to use um, if you look up. And hopefully you know about this powerful tool from Excel, but if not, um, it'll be a good it'll be a good exercise. So in cell E31, where we are right now, type in the the title mean, and then in cell E32, we're going to copy so we don't screw the formula up. And we did all this. We're going to copy this formula called VLOOKUP, and I'll show you what that VLOOKUP does in just a minute. Uh, hopefully you've seen it all before, and this is like, yeah, just another day in the park for you. Okay, so what VLOOKUP does is it takes and looks for gym vacuum in this list. And then it's going to look up in the eight column over. If you start here, one through eight, it's going to look in the eighth column and it's going to pick this value of uh, three. Then there it is, it picked three. So VLOOKUP is a powerful tool that tells, allows you to do a lookup against uh, a a um, previous entry in a table and then pick a row to return and the row it picked to return was this mean row that we did right here so um, now that we've done that um, we're going to in cell F32 we're going to enter the formula uh, equals C8 Basically, we're just going to do this. And now we're going to copy these down so that we've captured all of those people. So now we've got a list of all of those people. And now let's do, uh, let's look up for each of these people what their rating was. So we go back over here. We're going to look up their means by copying this formula. Copy. We're going to paste. Enter. Let's check that out. Alan Cooks, and we're going to call this their mean as well. So Alan Cooks mean was listed as 3.5. Is that right? It is right. 3.5. So now let's copy that formula down. now we've got the means for all of those people and you can go back up here and check but those are the correct means for all of those people and then now what we're going to do is we're going to do an adjustment in J30 uh, so for the restaurant of interest we're going to enter in cell I31 we're going to put uh, let me go back should just follow my notes so we've got this table and that worked correct okay and now that we've got the tables looking correct now we're going to go determine the similarity of the selected person to the other raters by capturing the correlations in that correlation matrix matrix that we created so in cell h31 we're going to enter the title similarity and then in H32, we're going to copy this index formula to capture that information from the table above. So if we paste that into H32, what you see is it's going to look up Jim Vacuum against Alan Cook. So it's going to go Jim Vacuum, Alan Cook should be 0.6262. 2242291 and it did. So that was correctly calculated. So we're going to drag that formula down and Jim Vacuum 
is very similar to Jim Vacuum. He's perfectly similar. That should be correct. So really the similarity is this the correlation coefficient between the comparison of the two people. Okay, now that we know how similar Jim Vacuum is with the, each of these people, now we need to do it to the restaurant of interest rising roll. So if we go back to here, we're going to capture the restaurant rating for each restaurant we we're predicting across all of the other raters. So in cell I31, we're going to enter restaurant rating, restaurant rating, and then in I32, we're going to enter this index formula here. Basically, we're going to do a lookup. And let's see what it's going to do. It looks up Alan Cook for rising Alan Cook for rising roll, and it says that should be a two, based on Alan Cook rising roll two. Let's see if that works. It does. So now we, oops, we copy that formula down through the rest of the raters, and you can see the rating that they gave. Um, and then now we're going to adjust the rating between the Raytor, Alan Cooks, for instance, and Jim Vacuum. We're going to do an adjustment. So uh, if you go to here, we're going to in cell J31, enter the title adjustment. So basically, we're going to take Jim Vacuum's rating of uh, 3 across the board, his mean, Alan Cook's rating of 3.5 across the board. Alan gave that restaurant rising roll a 2, and this is going to be an adjustment factor. And so now we're going to go, if we go here, uh, enter this formula into cell J32. Oops. Control B, enter. And what you see is Alan Cooks gave rising roll a 2. His overall mean is 3. Basically, the adjustment for him is that rising roll is less than his average mean by 1.5. We're going to take that and drag that down as well. So if we go back to our PowerPoint, basically it's going to show you that this should be the table that you get. And we're almost ready to make our prediction. So the next thing we need to do is do an absolute value adjustment column that applies an absolute value to the similarity. So in K31, we're going to enter the title absolute correction. A, B, S, correction. And then we're going to apply this formula. I should have made it red. I'll make it red now. Copy. Go back here. Put it up in here and go paste. And the absolute correction is just a, a way to take the absolute value of whatever's in the similarity score and create that as the correction. Um, and then we're going to drag this down so that we've got the absolute correction on all of the individual raters. And then here, the next step we're going to do is we are going to do our final uh, prediction. So in cell F40, enter the title total adjustment. F40 total Okay, and, and for the total adjustment, we're going to apply the sum product function. And if you've never seen sum product function, uh, I would recommend looking up um, the sum product. Uh, just Google it, and you'll see that it multiplies uh, different uh, aspects together and then adds them up. 
uh, and divides by the sum. So we're, you can see that right here, what it's actually doing is it's taking the sum of this and the sum of this divided by the sum of uh, k, which gives us this final reading. So we'll go back to the spreadsheet. We're going to put in final rating here. So in total adjustment, though, we're going to put that formula we just looked at right here. Copy. We'll put it in here and paste. And that is the adjustment, the final adjustment from this mean, which is a final adjustment of negative three. And so now the predicted rating is equal to this mean plus this adjustment. So in other words, it's predicted that Jim Vacuum's rating for rising roll is going to be less than his overall rating for all restaurants. As a matter of fact, his rating is expected to be 2.67568812. And, you know, if you go back to the spread, uh, PowerPoint, you know, what does that mean? It means that if this were a recommender engine um, and you were trying to figure out like whether or not to recommend rising roll to Jim Vacuum, it's going to be less than his overall rating, so it probably wouldn't be a good recommendation to make. So this is what all this torture of this spreadsheet is doing. It's taking the sum of other raters similarity of raters to Jim times this other ratings, other raters rating for rising roll minus other ratings, raters average rating divided by the sum of all raters relative to other raters similarity to Jim. That okay, so we're almost to the end. So we walked through this user base recommendation model. And then the question is, how do you use it? So how do you predict with it? So if you go back to the spreadsheet, I'm going to ask you to predict the score for Yang Tree at Sushi to Go. So if you go into here and you change the restaurant to Sushi to Go, and then you change this to Yang Tree, essentially it's changed all the numbers and now it says that Yang Tree's average restaurant rating is a three, but she's less likely to like sushi to go. Um, so we would, if we go back to here, it's 2.8521. That's what you see here. The next question is, what would Rich Luster think about rising roll? We could go here, uh, rising roll, Rich Luster, and essentially his average mean is 2.67, but his final rating for rising roll is 1.91. Probably wouldn't like that. So we put the 1.91 here. Predict for a near celebrate. And you just go in here, you drop down to, um, we wanted to predict for Chick-fil-A. So you change it to Chick-fil-A, a near celebrate. And essentially you get Anir's average restaurant rating is 3.33. His rating for Chick-fil-A would be 2.65. And if you look up here, Anir celebrate for Chick-fil-A, it's slightly, you know, he actually rated it a three, but we, our predictor engine gave it a 2.65. So what that brings up though is how the values compare. So his actual rating was three, his predicted rating is 3.65. Is that good? So in doing predictor engines, uh, for instance, the Netflix used the root mean square error as a way to evaluate how effective uh, the predictions are. So they, if you were to do everybody's predictions and you compared their actual rating 
minus their predicting rating squared over the number of ratings in total, that would give you the root mean square error. And that is the way that they ran their competition. They said, give me a 10% improvement in root mean square error. So everything that we just did on this build chart is copied here and you can see it in the correlation user based one. And then uh, what we haven't done yet, so we've done user base, we've compared user against user to make a recommendation. But now if we took the item based, item based is totally different. It essentially compares restaurant to restaurant and say, says which restaurants are like each other. So uh, essentially what you can do then is you can take an individual person and an individual restaurant, it compares it with their overall mean and makes an adjustment based on the individual restaurant. So we could take a New Year's Celebrate to Chipotle and the restaurant to restaurant version uh, gave you a final rating of 3.07 which is very close to Anir's actual rating uh, for Chipotle of three. So um, by comparing restaurant to restaurant, you may get a little bit closer prediction, at least you did in this toy uh, example that we just did. And uh, we've done some calculations here based on item-based modeling as well. So now we finished the modeling step and given the modeling step, we now need to evaluate that. So let's go back and look at the CEO's challenge. The CEO said, I want to be able to predict a restaurant rating uh, based on other people's ratings and other restaurants. We were able to do that. And we did it with a toy model, which really only had seven people and six restaurants. So deploying this may be a significant effort. So um, if you look what happened on the Netflix challenge, um, you'll find out that they didn't implement the whole thing, as we just mentioned, because of engineering cost. Well, that wraps up what we wanted to go over today. And you've seen this entire analytics process. And you've seen also um, models that give you recommendations based on either item-based or user-based uh, uh, similarity. So I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys and look forward to um, seeing you all with your doctor in front of your name. Talk to you later. Bye.